Hi everyone, my name is Lori and I'm one of the naturalists here for Polk County Conservation. And what I brought with me today are some taxidermy mounts that will help us talk a little bit about some of the local birds that we have here in Iowa. So when we do the bird program with our first graders, we always talk about, so what does make a bird a bird? How do we know a bird from all the other animals in nature? And we talk about how certain animals have certain characteristics, um, things that are special just for that animal, all right? So put your thinking caps on, first graders, and think about what does make a bird a bird? Hmm. So one thing, is all birds have feathers, right? So they all have a body covering with feathers. Now, depending on the size of the bird, the kind of the bird depends on the beautiful color of those feathers, okay? And feathers have this really unique kind of adaptation in and of themselves where they're actually kind of zipped, you could say they're zipped together. So nature kind of created zippers even before we did. And if we take a close look at the feather, you'll see how they're kind of twined together. So let's see if we can do that with our filming. So here we have a wild turkey feather. And if I take that apart and then take the little hooks and they slowly zip back together. And that's what helps a bird fly. So, Birds have feathers. That's one thing that makes a bird a bird. Another thing, I'm sure some of you are saying out there, is all birds have wings, all right? And so, yes, you're right. All birds do have wings. But just because all birds have wings, and here's a question, does that mean all birds can fly? Hmm, so think about that, all right? Um, now, birds have feathers, birds have wings, Birds also, another adaptation we could say about birds is all birds lay eggs, all right? And depending on the kind of bird, depends on the kind and the size of the egg and even the color of the egg. And that's kind of fun to study of itself. Here's a little robin's nest with a robin's egg in it, okay? So that's another thing that makes a bird a bird. Another thing that makes a bird a bird is the beaks, right? So different birds have different kind of beaks. And there's these wonderful books that just talks about birds and their beaks. And those beaks are what we would call an adaptation, right? So those beaks help them survive in nature and help them figure out or help them find their food, help them build their nest. So that's a very important adaptation. In our taxidermy mounts, we're gonna talk about their beaks and what kind of food they gather with and eat with those beaks, okay? So birds have feathers, birds have wings, birds have beaks, and birds lay eggs. Another thing that makes a bird a bird is all birds breathe, they have lungs, so they breathe air, okay? So that makes a bird a bird. Another thing is all birds have feet. They have two feet. I don't know if I brought that book with me, I didn't. Okay, so those feet, um, are another adaptation and they help us, they help that bird survive in its habitat. So we have some examples of different bird feet, okay? And just by looking at the bird's feet, you're gonna say, whoa, those birds live in way different habitats. They survive way differently, okay? So the bird over here on this side with the beautiful orange, that bird has an adaptation to live in the water. You're right. These birds live in the water. So this is a duck's foot. And over here, this bird is a bird that lives on land. And this big feet is, helps that bird walk and helps them scratch and get the insects and the seeds. This is a wild turkey's foot. Okay. Another bird's foot that we brought, I brought out are birds that use their feet to actually catch their food, all right? So these are some of nature's best mouse traps. They are come down and they hang on. These are from the birds of prey. These are called talons. They're very sharp talons, all right? So that's another adaptation and another what we call characteristics of birds. The birds have two feet, 
Okay, they just have different kinds of feet, different kinds of beaks, depending on where they live, what habitat they live in, and how they get their food. All right. Um, now, when I do the birds program, I really like to use books. And so I encourage you guys, if you're studying birds with your science unit, go online, look for some good books. Maybe you have some at home. Um, and one of my favorite ones is uh, Feathers for Lunch. And just because this one has really good pictures and it talks about some of our most common songbirds, okay? And this one is probably a bird you're seeing in your yard right now with it being spring and with the uh, frost being out, the guy with the red belly and he's getting down and he's getting that worm. He's using that beak we just talked about that's specially adapted, okay, to get the worm. So this is our American Robin. So hopefully you guys have seen the Robin out in your yard. It's a very common bird of Iowa. Now, this bird, this guy with his blue, blue feathers, okay? He's kind of got this crest up here and we kind of call him the policeman of the forest. He's the one that sounds out a loud warning when you're going into the woods and he says his name. He says, Jay, Jay. So this guy is our blue Jay. Okay. And he's got a much bigger beak than our robin does. He can eat things a little bit bigger, but the blue jay, he really eats just about anything. He's an animal that can survive eating acorns, as well as worms, as well as seeds, as well as insects. Now here's another beautiful bird that we have that's very common in Iowa, and I'm sure you're hearing them calling you in your yards and in the parks right now. This bird has beautiful red feathers, all right? And this bird again has the crest on its head right here and it's got that more conical shaped beak so its beak is made specifically for getting seeds and this bird makes a sound it goes what cheer cheer he is our cardinal okay and i'm going to show you a taxidermy mount of a cardinal very soon so again this book just has great pictures of our very common birds that we have sometimes you may be out you may hear a tap 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 on the tree and what you're hearing is a bird that has a beautiful red head but it has feet that can specifically hang on to the side of a tree remember how we said feet were a characteristic uh, adaptation of the birds and so this is our woodpecker our red-headed woodpecker and he's got a very stiff tail that helps him so he doesn't fall over he's got that very stiff beak that allows him to peck a hole in the tree and he's doing that to use that long sticky tongue to get the insects, all right? So that is our red-headed woodpecker. So listen for them out tapping along the trees when you're out in nature. This bird, okay, he would be around if you have around your home or um, a city park that has a wetland in it. That's where you're gonna find this beautiful bird with his black feathers. And on his wing, he's got a red spot. So he's called a red-winged blackbird and he likes to be around the wetlands they will actually weave their nest into a plant called a cattail which grows at the edge of the wetlands uh, and then we have this beautiful bird with orange feathers so birds just have all these beautiful feathers this bird has a much longer and skinnier beak all right and this guy is very special this bird travels all the way from south america and she, they come up here and build their nest um, and they come to eat our insects. They really like our insects up here in Iowa. So this bird with his orange and black feathers is, is a neotropical bird because he spends his winters down in South America and then he comes up here um, and, builds, and builds her nest up here in, in spring and, and raises her young in the summer. So this bird with his orange feathers um, its name starts with an O and it's an Oriole. Okay. So O for orange and O for Oriole. And then this bird often gets confused with this bird right here. Okay. Now you'd say they don't look at all alike, but it's the sound they make. Okay. These birds, you often find two together, they're called the morning dove. And they make a sound that goes and they kind of make that cooing sound and people think they have an owl in their yard. What they're hearing is the morning dove. This guy right here, our barred owl, he makes a much different sound and he calls at night, where these guys call in the morning. 
and notice their beaks. They're much different. So our morning dove has a beak that is for eating insects. Our barred owl has a beak that is made for catching the prey and eating the prey, like a mouse. And here we have another woodpecker. This guy is our flicker. He's got the beautiful yellow feathers. He's got little polka dots. He's got a little red part up here on his head. He's just a very colorful bird and he's in the woodpecker family, again with that big solid beak. And then we'll end with this bird. And this bird should be visiting, coming back to Iowa now after being gone um, all winter. This is our ruby-throated hummingbird. And the hummingbird is called that specifically because he flies so fast with his wings it makes a humming sound. And the hummingbird has this long skinny beak and that long skinny beak is made to go into those flowers and eat the nectar. And one thing a hummingbird can do that other birds cannot do is hummingbirds have the ability to fly forward, but they can also fly backwards. So that makes them very unique. So hopefully you guys will have some hummingbirds visiting your lawn. Now I'm gonna show you some um, of our taxidermy mounts and just kind of go through these real quick. Um, so our taxidermy mounts, these are birds that we have found in our parks or um, people have brought them to us and then we turn them into study mounts so we can bring them into the schools and the classrooms. So we did not kill any of these birds, okay? And the first bird I wanna talk about is that bird, if you remember from the book with the beautiful red feathers and that cone-shaped beak, okay? This was our cardinal. And the cardinal, um, the male is the bright red and the female down here, she's the duller brown and that's because she's on the nest and she wants to blend in to her nest. And when you blend into your habitat, that's called camouflage. Okay. So that is our male, our boy and our girl, our male and our female cardinal. Male's bright red, female or girl cardinal is the dull brown. And they're very common right now. Hopefully you'll see them around your neighborhood. And then we have this bird with this beautiful blue and we talked about him in that story um, or when we were showing you the picture book this guy is the blue jay now some people want to say oh it's a bluebird it's a bluebird well he has blue feathers but there are two different birds this guy's the blue jay and in a minute i'm going to show you the blue bird and that his beak is that bigger thicker beak and that means he can eat just about anything he's not too picky of an eater he's the guy we call the policeman of the forest that blue jay now here is the one bird, or beautiful taxidermy mount, that people get confused. Sometimes they think this is a robin, okay? But actually, if you look at the beautiful blue on its feathers, it's got that very translucent blue, but it does have the red feather breast like the robin. This bird is actually called a blue bird. So this is our beautiful blue bird, the blue bird of happiness, they say. And he is an um, insect eater with those, with that beak. Now here is a bird that was not in the storybook. And this bird happens to be with his bright yellow feathers and its black cap and its conical shaped beak. It's a seed eater. This happens to be our state bird of Iowa. Now, do you guys happen to know what our state bird of Iowa would be? And don't say the Hawkeye bird, <laughs> the cyclone fan. This guy is our um, American goldfinch, all right? So this is our state bird. The goldfinch is our state bird of Iowa, all right? So I love that taxidermy mount. And then a couple other birds that we talked about in the story was our red-headed woodpecker. And here he is with that conical or that long, long beak, right? that's made for pecking holes in trees. And he's got that long tongue that he sticks in to get the insects. He's an insect eater. And he's got those special feet. I don't know if we can see it on our taxidermy mount where he can hang on to the side of a tree. And again, because of his red head, he's called the red-headed woodpecker. And then this bird is in the woodpecker family also. Well, this guy's got a little bit more color going on. He's got the beautiful yellow shafted feathers back here. He's got the little white rump patch. He's got the little red kind of arrow on his head. And then on his breast feathers, look at those beautiful little dots. 
It's just a beautiful bird, and he's got that black bib going on. Okay. So this is our flicker. This is called the northern flicker. And you'll often find him on the tree, but also on the ground eating grubs. All right. Now, on to another one of our taxidermy mounts. This was that one that had orange feathers and that long beak for eating those insects. This bird is a neotropical, remember, spends its winters down in South America, comes up here, builds a beautiful basket-like nest to raise her young and eat our insects. Orange feathers, and the name of the bird starts with an O. It's an Oriole, the Oriole. All right, and then I brought this guy with just because it's fun when you're talking about birds to talk about our birds of prey. And this guy's our nocturnal, right, which means nighttime bird of prey. He's got those very sharp talons for catching rodents, okay, like mice. He's got that sharp curved beak that helps him tear pieces of food so he can swallow it. This is our barred owl, B-A-R-R-E-D. So bars going across his chest, okay. This is our barred owl. All right, boys and girls. So guys... Hopefully you had fun learning about some of our birds of Iowa, um, some of our songbirds, some of our birds of prey, um, and how they have different adaptations and what makes a bird a bird. So since we're kind of doing this remotely, we have a really unique place out at our park called a bird blind. And I am gonna take my binoculars and we are gonna drive out to the bird blind and we are gonna see what birds we can find actually at our bird feeders. And you can see some of these birds live and hear some of the sounds that they make, all right? So we'll see you out there. Hi guys, we're out at the Jester Park bird blind. Let's come on in and see if we can find some birds. So welcome to our bird blind. If you look at the bird uh, feeders real carefully, you notice that there's numbers on them. So when you're sitting at, at, in here in the bird blind, you can say, hey, look at bird, or bird feeder number two. And what was just on there was a red-winged blackbird right before we came in and he flew away. And you notice different shapes and sizes. Um, so different birds will come to different feeders. And this is a really good place to come all year round. We keep bird seed in our feeders um, so you can look at birds in all the four seasons of Iowa. There's our goldfinch sound. Oh, 
Chickadees on the goldfish. <laughs>